Well, hello everybody. Uh, so what's going on here in this tutorial? I'm gonna show you how to write a uh, smart contract in Solidity. So first thing, if if we are using a programming language, as I told you, like we're gonna be using a programming a programming language language called Solidity for smart contracts. So you need an IDE. Uh, in our case, uh, we're gonna use an IDE called uh, Remix. Uh, and it doesn't require much to open it, so I'm just get here and write for Google Remix Ethereum. And I'm gonna open the new, uh, the first thing that appears to me, uh, remix.ethereum.org. And this is like an online IDE, and it's really cool because uh, you don't need to install anything in your local machine. So just opening an IDE completely from the web. Uh, and you can find here after I open that IDE uh, that there are already projects, uh, written projects uh, that I can find. Uh, can find here like three projects here. And this is cool because it gives you an idea what is the structure of Solidity programming language. Uh, like for example here, this is the part in which the contract, in which uh, describes what the contract is doing. Uh, you can find here this word keyword contract, which actually is like a class in other programming language. So you can, you know, in other programming language is a class, but here it's contract. Uh, you can find here these are the attributes of the contract, like uh, attributes of classes in other programming languages. And these are the methods uh, use the keyword function. Uh, we're not go gonna go in detail uh, about the keywords uh, in this video. Uh, it's gonna be in later videos, just you know, get a sense of the structure of the programming language and how to run it. So now we have our code, we need to run it. We need to see how it is uh, behaving. So first thing, we need to put that inside a blockchain. Uh, I gotta tell you something here because smart contracts by itself is worthless it, it means nothing it has to be living inside some kind of a blockchain in order to be doing anything that is supposed to be doing so uh, i'm gonna go here to that tab and you can find here this is like the compile view for the for the code you have written so uh, you can find here like options for 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 the compile process uh here you, you're choosing the compiler version itself for your code in, in my case, I leave it as it is, like I leave everything as default. Uh, and I never actually check that, uh, including Natli builds, because these are like the, the kind of builds that developers uh, make during uh, night while they're sleepy and it contains lots of bugs. Uh, by the way, I'm joking, of course, it's it's not the way it is, but uh, I just recommend you not to, not to choose any Natli build anyway. Uh, so I just compile that code into uh like it, in in that case like it compiles to two versions like an abi and a bytecode uh this abi is kind of the the thing that you can read uh and the bytecode is what is actually running inside the blockchain so uh we just you know we're just gonna not concerned about this for now so now we have like a compiled version of your uh, of your smart contract. You need that compiled version to go inside a blockchain. So we go to the other tab here, and this is where you choose your blockchain in which your contract is gonna run. Uh, you have here the first option is the environment in which your, your smart contract is gonna run. Uh, I choose this first option. Uh, the other options like represent other blockchains uh, in which your smart contract gonna live. Uh, I know uh, I didn't explain blockchain as I said in the previous video. I'm not gonna explain it because it requires its own set of tutorials. Uh, but for now, you can think about a blockchain as a server, uh, as a server backend for your code. So you have this contract, and you need your contract to run somewhere. So a blockchain is like the server that your contract is running in. Uh, and whatever you do in your contract, like uh, this is like something special about the blockchain. It's it's really cool. Like any function that I call in that contract is gonna be recorded somehow in the blockchain. So everything is 
is registered in the blockchain like it's tracking everything so in my case here i'm choosing the blockchain that my uh, my smart contract is going to live in uh, this first choice is like the blockchain that is uh, that is special uh, the, the, the blockchain that is owned by remix itself it's like this blockchain that is living inside remix uh, so I'm choosing it the other options I'm not gonna choose it unless I'm using other IDE uh, if I'm using remix I usually use that option now we come to the other options here you can see here accounts and that is because if I'm using a, a smart contract you know a contract in general is some kind of an agreement that is done between users uh, so these users has to have something to identify themselves by so in our case these are unique addresses that identify our users uh, and you can find here that these users each user of them is having an amount of ether which is actually like money so these are the money that they're having and this is like 100 ether which is really a lot of money so usually we don't have this amount of money uh, but these are actually test ethers that we use only for programming and it's worth nothing it can't do it can't do anything in the real world it just we use it in order to test our code in that blockchain uh, that we are using here now you can find this option which is really interesting is the gas limit so let me tell you the truth about blockchain and smart contracts. Everything, literally everything you do in the blockchain, it has to cost you money. So you have to be aware <coughs> about that. Uh, so when we when we say about cost in in our smart contracts, we talk about gas. So this cost, this fee is called gas. Uh, so if like I'm, I'm calling this function in in the smart contract it has to cost me uh, some gas and that gas actually is very little amount uh, in this case even when I'm deploying just deploying my smart contract it's also gonna cost me uh, money because I told you like when when I'm calling this function for example it, it gets recorded in the blockchain anything I do in the blockchain uh, anything I do in the smart contract is uh, recorded in the blockchain which is a cost on you so uh, this limit is saying like uh, if I'm deploying that contract and it costs me like 4 million gas so please do not deploy it like stop it I'm, I'm not gonna be willing to pay that 4 million but uh, if it costs like uh, 2 million or something then you can deploy it because the gas limit here is I guess this is 3 million so uh, this is the limit in which you are deploying your contract okay so now let's get uh, what is this number because I know it sounds a little bit concerning because that 3 million sounds like a lot of money but actually it's not uh, if that is 3 million ether so <laughs> that's actually impossible because you, 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 you there is there is nobody actually will be willing to pay uh, like 3 million ether that's a lot a lot a lot of money uh, but this is like a denomination of an ether uh, like you have dollars you have cents uh, which is a denomination of dollar you also have a lot of denominations for ether so this 3 million ether uh, this sorry 3 million something is is not actually one ether so don't worry about it uh, now after we have our uh, contract compiled now we are ready to deploy it into that uh, virtual machine which is actually just a blockchain in which our contract need to live in so once I'm done deploying it you can see the changes done here like saying like now I deployed a contract uh, now I need to interact with that contract so uh, when I when when I you, you find here like this is these are the functions that are defined in the contract I define here there is a store function and a retrieve function the store function is taking an argument so if I want to call it I'm just like it's taking a number so I'm gonna give it 4 and I click on that function here and I'm gonna choose the account that calls that function so this is like another user that is calling that function inside a smart contract and I call store and you can find here this account was having uh, 100 ether now it's having like 99.999 whatever because everything you do 
costs you some money and it's really a, a little amount of money uh, so once uh, this function is called you can see the change happening inside the blockchain itself it's saying like now it's doing a transaction uh, for that function called the store that lives in the storage contract so storage.store and now here it says like that transaction has been done so uh, think about it like that's just the server the database that is recording everything that's being done to the smart contract so uh, uh, for for the next videos now we're gonna talk about like how to write uh, smart contracts in solidity so i hope to see you there